Hi everybody, hola amigos, Lee here from Busted Knuckle Woodworks. Today we're going to talk about the new 2022 model Laguna Sea Flux 1 1.5 horsepower dust collection system and how to best set up a dust collection system for a smaller woodworking shop. I'll go through unboxing the Laguna Sea Flux 1, setting it all up and putting it through its paces and then I'll let you know what I think of it. There are some updated features on this new 2022 model so I'll point these out as we go. I do want to mention that Laguna is not sponsoring this video. I have no affiliation with Laguna whatsoever, and I paid for this entire system with my own hard-earned money. That being the case, I won't be afraid to tell you what I really think, good and bad. 100% honesty here. I'm definitely not going to be holding anything back. So are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do this thing. I'm a lot like most of you guys. I've got a pretty small workshop, a converted to a car garage, about 450 square feet. If you squint, for a long time, my entire dust collection system was powered by this little fellow right here, a rigid job site vac with a Homer bucket cyclone bungee corded to the top. You may be tempted to laugh, but believe it or not, this actually worked pretty well with my benchtop router table, benchtop bandsaw, and job site table saw. I will tell you, if you're in a small shop, running small tools on the weekend, a system like this may be all that you need. I did upgrade it with these caster wheels and a Sentec hose. The Sentec hose system makes it easy to snap the hose to your various tools, so if you're going the shop vac route, that's a worthy upgrade in my opinion. I'll be keeping all Homer here for sanding duties. It still works great for that. However, in my case, as the router table got bigger and the bandsaw got bigger and the table saw got much bigger, along with the addition of a planer and a jointer, it became evident that old Homer was struggling to keep up. I was spending more and more time sucking out and blowing out dust buildup that a real dust collection system would be catching in the first place. At that point, I started to explore my options. I knew anything two horsepower or over would be overkill in a small shop like this, so I limited my search to systems under two horsepower, which meant it could run on 110 volts. I do have 220 in here, but that's dedicated for tool use, and running another 220 volt circuit wasn't an expense I was willing to take on right now. I also set a budget of $2,000 because this was my last social media payout. Yeah, I'm not getting rich anytime soon. At first, I considered a wall-mounted unit. These are a good choice for most small shops if you're okay with leaving it in a fixed position and the lack of an integrated cyclone separator. But thanks to old Homer, I am completely sold on the value in having cyclonic separation in any dust collection system. When I added the cyclone bucket to the little shop vac, I went from changing the filter bag once a week to about once every six months. And the more dust you can remove from the stream before it reaches the filter, the less hard the filter will have to work, the longer the filter will last, the more suction that will be retained, and the cleaner the return air will be. I knew if I got a wall mounted unit, something like the 1250 CFM Rockler Dustrite, which don't get me wrong, is a great unit, I definitely would want to add a canister filter and a cyclone separator. Once you figure in that added expense, plus the fittings to make it all work, at that point you're starting to get well into the pricing territory of a mobile system that already has all that stuff built in. Plus, being a small shop, almost everything I have in here is on wheels. I rearranged my layout in here fairly frequently, so I felt I needed the flexibility of being able to move this thing around. So given these criteria, mobile with a canister filter and a cyclone separator that would run on 110 volts and would come in at or under my budget of $2,000, I narrowed down my search to three options. The Oneida Mini Gorilla, 
the Jet JCDC 1.5, and the Laguna C Flux 1. These are all one and a half horsepower, two stage systems with canister filters and cyclone separators. All of them run on 110, and they all come in at or under $2,000. They also all have great reviews and feedback from owners. And honestly, I don't think you would really go wrong opting for any of these. So first up was the Oneida Mini Gorilla. Oneida is a company that specializes in dust collection systems and they make some great gear, especially with their large, higher-end systems. Personally though, I think the stuff they're aiming toward the small shop market tends to be a bit overpriced. The Mini Gorilla comes in at about $1,800 and at the end of the day, I just couldn't bring myself to pay nearly two grand for a motor, a filter, and a huge chunk of plastic. And yes, the Mini Gorilla is mostly plastic. It does have a lot of dedicated users though, and great reviews. It also happens to have the smallest footprint of the three. So if space is at a premium in your shop, you may want to include this one on your list. So for me, that left the Jet and the Laguna. The Jet JCDC is rated for 1,250 cubic feet per minute, while the Laguna C Flux 1 claims 1,314 cubic feet per minute, although these figures don't really mean very much when it comes to evaluating real world performance. Companies derive these nominal ratings by measuring directly at the inlet without the filter installed, without any hoses or ductwork installed, which is of course not how these machines are intended to be used at all. With the filter attached, the jet comes in at 763 cubic feet per minute, while the Laguna comes in at 900. So pretty comparable. Build quality, fit and finish is excellent on both machines. If you've narrowed it down to these two options, I honestly think you'd be happy with either one. In the end, I went with the Laguna for a few reasons. Being a newer 2022 design, there are a few small but nice to have features the Laguna has that the Jet lacks, like a little more power, a larger, easier to empty drum, and the option to wire the unit for 220 volts, which is something I may want to do in the future. None of these are deal clinchers or deal breakers in my opinion, but to me, several of these small differences added together gave the edge to the Laguna, despite the $300 price difference. The Jet will run you $1,700, while the Laguna comes in at about two grand even. So I've got the Laguna right outside, fresh from the dealer, so let's bring it in, unbox it, get it set up, and see what we've got. Okay, this comes in all one big box, attached to a pallet. Okay, we got all the stuff off the top of the styrofoam. Let's dig in a little deeper. Lost my knife, of course. Did any of you guys see where I put it? Twenty twenty two model. Okay, so I honestly do not know what to do from here. This thing is heavy and I don't have an engine lift or a hoist. I do have a son. Maybe I should call him. So we've got this thing inside the shop now. One thing I will tell you is you cannot do this by yourself. You'll need two people or maybe even three. This thing is heavy, 
heavy, heavy. The other thing I'm noticing here, no plug. That looks like another trip to the store. This is all the stuff that came in the box and packed inside the styrofoam. So let's see what we've got here. We've got a remote control, or as my little brother used to say, mocho. We've got a mocho. Where do I put this thing so I don't lose it? I am guaranteed to lose this, okay. Ah, okay. Danger, warning, caution, caution, warning, warning. We're just gonna skip all over all that. Important safety instructions, yada, yada. There are instructions in here for how to rewire the motor for 220. So that's a very handy feature um, that other machines in this class don't have. You need to use this top styrofoam because you need to flip this over in order to attach the base. I'm gonna need some help flipping this over, but you need to use this top styrofoam as a base. So when you unpack this, make sure you leave this intact. So I'm back. I'm totally not filming this on a different day. They give you this little stamp steel toolkit. <laughs> Why do they bother? The popping you hear outside is acorns hitting my truck. They're not gunshots. I don't live in that kind of a neighborhood. So my next step is waiting to get some help to turn over the unit so I can put on these caster wheels and these support pieces. We're going to flip this over now and that should be the end of the two-man operation thing. Thank you. You're welcome. Anytime. Austin Garst. Yep. Mr. Muscles. Assistant on days that end with the letter Y. <laughs> These go on next. Then these Z-shaped Brackets go on, they'll support the foot pedal bars. These are the supports for the dust bucket foot pedal. Those go onto those support brackets we just put on. Okay, well, you probably can't see this, but I'm trying to use my phone here to show this. It might be a little shaky. There are holes here and here that have to line up with the tool holes in here. By sliding this in here, and then dropping these long bolts down through. Except you'll see that there's no room to do that because of the support bracket in the way. And this support bracket was put on several steps ago. So uh, that's, that's a problem. We're gonna have to take the support bracket off in order to access these holes and then 
put it back on. So I will do that now. So now I've taken the support brackets off. You can see where the holes were, that support bracket that reinforces this joint right here. Now that I've taken that off, I can get these long bolts through and secure this. I've already done one, I gotta do another one over here. I can kind of see why they did that because without this support bracket, it would be very, treacherous to turn it around because this is not very strong it's just secured with two bolts up here and so you need this for strength when you when you turn it over but they don't tell you in the manual that you do need to remove these again of course one at a time there's one over here and there's one over here as well and you will have to remove those to get this foot pedal on and then there's another one as well so let's go ahead and do that reinstall these support brackets and we'll be able to move on to the next step so the next step is to put the dust bucket lift handle on it actually shows this as a different color uh chrome plated color in the manual again i suspect the manual is a little out of date Okay, so the dust bucket handle is on. Moving forward. Okay, the next step is to attach these cross pieces to the drum barrel support so that you will see the rides on these springs. So, more problems with the instructions. The instruction manual on page 27 says to attach this crossbar to the lid. That's the next step. It talks about using two bolts removed in the previous step. There were no re -bolt bolts removed in any previous step. And also, there are six holes here and six holes in the bottom of the cyclone. If you attach this crossbar to the lid first, this lid will never fit on the cyclone. The tag on it says to attach it to the cyclone first, which is completely contradictory. But if you do that, again, this lid won't fit on it. What we need to do, and again, this is not what the instructions say, but what you definitely need to do is you need to attach this drum lid to the cyclone first. We attach it with four bolts, then we put this on, then we'll install the remaining two bolts and that should work. But it took a little figuring out. That's not what the instructions say, but that's definitely what you have to do, so. So what I need to do here is attach this tape underneath the bottom of the cyclone so that we'll get a good seal with the drum lid so I'll I'll take care of that now I've applied the tape to the bottom of the cyclone I have a little left over here that I'm lit on the trim off um, but one thing that you want to be aware of is that this plate is meant to be able to move it's very easy when you're applying this tape to apply it uh, incorrectly, which will uh, take the plate to the cyclone and won't allow it to move. So uh, as you're uh, applying this tape, make sure you work this so that this continues to be able to spin. Something to be aware of. So next we'll attach this drum lid. Uh, I'll start with two bolts and then work my way around, attach the crossbar, and then tighten everything down. Now, 
Yeah, you've got to make sure that you orient this in the correct manner so that it lines up inside the uprights. So this proved to be pretty tricky. The drum lid is on, it is lined up between the uprights. This actually, like I mentioned before, actually will turn as long as these bolts are loose. So what you want to do is when you install the six bolts, leave them loose so that the drum lid can turn and you can get these lined up. Don't give up until you do. It's tricky and if you don't do it exactly the right way, it'll be all cocked to one side or another. So what you want to do is just keep at it. They probably should have put some kind of alignment arrows on this to so it would eliminate all the geometry thinking. And uh, so what will happen is when we get the drum assembled, it'll, it'll fit in like this. This octagonal is not truly an octagonal. It's kind of an oval octagonal. So there's a long side, short side, long side, short side. You want to make sure the long side is in the front and the short sides are here. That lines up with the way the drum is, long side in the front. That's the window. The next step should be to take the bottom of the drum and install these small casters onto it. So it should be easy enough. Wow, look at that. The next thing is to put the drum together. Now, I know on the older model, this used to be several pieces and it was a real pain. Now they've reduced it to two pieces with just 10 screws. So that is a big improvement. This snaps together very easily and then just goes on with 10 sheet metal screws. So let's go ahead and do that. When you're lining this up, make sure the side with the window has two square holes. The other side, the back side, has one square hole. Make sure you put those on the same end, the top. Make sure you don't get this flipped over because you'll be taking it apart and redoing it. Something else they don't tell you, by the way. The next step is to put these brackets. These go on the drum lift to line up these three square holes with the three square holes here. They give you some carriage bolts. Let's go ahead and take care of that. You do want to put the carriage bolts in from the inside and the hex nut on the outside. The next step is to attach the bottom of the drum to the, to the drum. So we've got some sheet metal screws in here to be able to do that. Hopefully everything will line up. Looks good. We'll go ahead and do that and we'll be back. Another thing they don't tell you in the assembly instructions, uh, but they do provide these little rubber nibs right here. If I cover up my face, <laughs> it's trying to focus on my face. Okay. So it doesn't mention anything about these in the manual, but you're going to want to put these over the top of the truss head sheet metal screws that you use to attach the bottom of the drum. Otherwise, I think you definitely would run the risk of tearing the inner plastic bag liner. So we have the drum assembled. It's right here. You know, in assembly instructions, they usually tell you up front all the things you're going to need throughout the process. Well, one thing they don't tell you up front is that you are going to need a tube of silicone and a caulking gun. There are some cracks in here, in the corners, on the bottom and on the top that will definitely leak air if they aren't sealed. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and seal these openings in the corners and then I'll come back and we'll move on. There is a rubber gasket that goes on top of this as well. So we'll go ahead and put that on now. The final step on 
Finishing the outer drum is attaching the handles. One goes here, one goes here. So I'll go ahead and do that now. So some plastic bags came with this. One size for under the filter, one size for inside the drum. I've gone ahead and put a plastic bag inside the drum. Now there's a drum insert that I'm going to go ahead and assemble and then put that inside the plastic bag and we'll go from there. Okay, so we've got the drum fully assembled and now we line up the these brackets on the side with these pins and like so then we raise the bar and that raises the drum seals it against the lid there you go and now to empty it we'll just go like this I don't know why they call this a foot pedal I don't think you'd operate it with your foot, but, uh, and then lift this up, take the bag out, throw it away. Well, you actually wouldn't have to throw this bag away. It's a pretty heavy bag. You could use it several times, I think. So, and that's what I would suggest because the bags are kind of expensive. So we are in the home stretch here. This is the switch plate. It goes up here. This switch box mounts to it. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of that now. Okay, so I do have the switch box on now. Uh, I still have to put the splitter on for the inlet. And I do need to install a plug on this too. We have installed the inlet splitter. I put a plug on this, plugged it into the wall. This is the remote control. Let's give this a try. Ready? Three, two, one. Next. So that'll do it for part one of this video. In this video, we unboxed and assembled the Laguna C-Flux 1. So go ahead and check out part two, where I point out all the major features, talk about how I'm using it here in my shop, what fittings I'm using, how I'm running the hoses and duct work, the Izzy Swan quick lock system that I'm using to connect the tools, the IVAC system that controls everything, really everything you need to know to set up effective dust collection in a small workshop. At the end, I give my final evaluation to this unit. So go ahead and check out part two. But before you do, hit the like button and please subscribe to the channel. I've got several more videos in the works and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Thanks. I'm Lee from Busted Knuckle Woodworks. See you in part two. Adios amigos.